Did you know you can use masking fluid on wet paper and it blooms just like watercolor? Hey, I'm Jackie, and I'm gonna show you how to use masking fluid to paint a crashing wave. All the supplies are listed in the description. You can also grab my free guide, Masking Magic, for more masking fluid tips and tricks. Okay, let's get started. First, I make a light sketch. I'm drawing the horizon line a third of the way down from the top of the paper. Then, one third of the way up from the bottom, I'm drawing a line partway across to form the base of the rocks. Now I'm sketching in some rough rock shapes. I'm going to redraw those rocks because I wanted them to come up a little bit higher on the right side. Then I'll use my ruler again to draw a baseline for the crashing wave. Now I'm drawing the wave. It's just a gentle arc on the paper. That's all you need. With the sketch complete, I use my kneaded eraser to lighten the pencil lines so they're not too dark. Now we can apply masking fluid. We're gonna start on dry paper using a brush to apply the masking fluid in a solid line along the arc that we drew for the wave. Now I'm using the side of my brush to drag that masking fluid upward because there's always some sea spray coming off that edge of the wave. So that's what I'm trying to create here. Now I'm using my stylus to add small dots to enhance that sea spray. When you use a stylus to make dots, the first dot is always the largest, and then they get smaller. So I like to put the first dot on top of the solid line that I painted, and then continue adding smaller dots upward. After the masking fluid has dried, we can move on to doing the wet on wet masking fluid. This is a super cool technique I'm excited to show you. First, wet the top half of the paper from the bottom of the wave up into the sky, avoiding the rocks. When you apply masking fluid on wet paper, it will bloom out just like watercolor paint. You've probably been told not to put masking fluid on wet paper, which is generally good advice if you want hard edges. But if you want to create soft edges, you can use the blooming effect to create soft edges with masking fluid. I'm using PBO drawing gum, which is a blue masking fluid, so you can see where I'm applying it. I'm dotting in the masking fluid just like I would if I was dropping watercolor onto wet paper. It's the exact same thing with masking fluid. It's going to bloom out and spread. If it's not spreading much, you can re-wet the paper with clean water. For the crashing wave, I want a nice solid edge at the bottom, and at the top I want it to be irregular and foamy looking. When you use masking fluid with a brush, you should always wash your brush with soapy water frequently and dry it off before you put it back into your masking fluid. For more tips on working with masking fluid, check out my free guide, Masking Magic, at the link in the description. Here, I'm adding in some final dabs of masking fluid to make some extra splashes. Now I'm using my brush to add random thin strokes just below the wave because the water there is going to be choppy and have some of that white foam in it.
All right, that's it for our masking fluid. We need to let that part of the paper dry completely before we do anything else to it. While the top part of the paper is drying, we can work on the bottom part, which is the foreground water. I start by wetting the area below the wave, avoiding the rocks. I'm going to paint a watery mix of French ultramarine blue onto the paper. I'm doing a gradient going from dark at the bottom to lighter at the top. I'm always adding pigment from the bottom edge where I want it to be the darkest and then brushing up the page. Now for the rocks, I'm adding a touch of French ultramarine blue to a watery mix of burnt sienna. I'm painting the rocks in while the water area is still wet. I'm filling in the whole rock shape and then I'm going to let it touch the wet water. I'm actually pulling some of the rock color down into the water to help create the reflection of the rock. Now I'm mixing up a slightly darker mix of French ultramarine and burnt sienna to paint along the bottom edge of the rock to start building the shadow. Now that the top of the paper is completely dry, we can work on our sky gradient, which is the reverse of what we did in the water. It's gonna be darkest at the top of the paper and get lighter as it comes down to the horizon line. So I'm painting French ultramarine starting at the top and working my brush all the way down to the bottom. By the time you get to the bottom, you'll have less pigment so it makes a nice gradient. As long as the sky is wet, you can add more pigment. I'm stopping here to blot up extra paint along the tape edge and then I'll go in with one more pass of blue and bring it all the way down so I have good contrast behind the crashing wave. It's still darker at the top because the sky is always darker at the top. Always make sure to wipe up those edges because the pigment likes to travel along the tape edge, but you can carefully blot it up with a tissue before it dries. Now I want to add more green to the foreground water and start building the color inside the wave. This part of the paper is dry and I'm re-wetting it. I'm using a watery mix of phthalo green to paint the inside of the wave because when the sunlight comes through the wave it appears more green. Be very careful about how much of the phthalo green you use. It's a very strong pigment and you only need a tiny amount before it becomes overpowering. Now I'm bringing the green down into the water area, which I pre-wet. As I work down the page, I'm gonna add in more French ultramarine so it goes from green in the shallow area over the rocks to more blue in the foreground. Now it's time to paint in the horizon line and the deep part of the ocean. I wet the area just below the horizon line, being very careful to keep that line straight. I mix together French ultramarine and phthalo green to make a beautiful dark teal color. I'm painting it right along that horizon line and letting it bleed down to the top edge of the wave. I'm 
I'm adding a little bit more French ultramarine to my mix and painting it at the top edge right under the horizon line. This deep ocean color is going to give us a really nice contrast with the white part of the crashing wave. Now I'm using my tissue to gently blot up any of that dark paint that has settled on the masked area. It's time to work inside the wave now. We're going to paint the shadows inside the wave. I'm wetting that area with clean water. Then I'm adding a light mix of phthalo green. This time I'm dabbing it in at the edges right under the wave where it would be shadowed and then along the bottom edge. I'm using very small amounts of pigment here and I'm not adding any extra water to my brush. The paper is already wet so I don't need water, just pigment. Because phthalo green is really strong, I'm using tiny, tiny dabs of pigment. I'm starting to shape the wave and make it look like the inside of a cylinder. I'm continuing to deepen the color at the bottom edge, which is in shadow. I'm also adding a small amount of French ultramarine blue to deepen that color even more. I don't want to go any darker with the phthalo green because it's too strong. I'm actually taking some of the dry French ultramarine off of my palette. My brush is just wet enough to pick up small amounts of pigment, and then I'm using that to finish the shadow inside the wave. You can see how I'm drawing small arcs to suggest that it's like a cylinder inside the wave. Now I'm going to glaze another layer on the foreground water. I want to make it more green now that we have the inside of our wave established. I start with phthalo green up at the top right under the crashing wave and then bring it down into the blue part of the water. While the water is wet again, I take the opportunity to add some darker suggestions of ripples in the water. I don't add any water to my brush, just more French ultramarine pigment. Be careful not to overwork this part. I also want to bring some of that blue up into the light green area. My paper was already dry here, so I took another clean, damp brush to soften those marks into the green. Now the foreground water is done, and we can let that dry. It's time to work on the rocks. I mixed together French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. Those two colors actually make a really good black if you mix it strongly enough. By varying the amount of blue or burnt sienna, you can make a range of cool and warm grays. I painted the mix over the rocks and then I used my tissue to dab out some texture. I also dabbed in some darker color and then blotted it some more with the tissue. Ultimately, I just wanted to add some texture on the rocks, but not spend too much time on them. Then I took a little bit of that leftover mix that was on the palette and painted it on the water below the rocks, which is dry now. So I rinsed out my brush and blotted it dry so I could use it to soften the edges of the reflection. 
Now it's time to remove the masking fluid. I am using an adhesive eraser, or sometimes it's called a rubber cement pickup tool. It's helping me rub off the masking fluid, revealing the bright white paper. Instead of a hard edge, you see we get a soft, feathered edge because we applied the masking fluid onto wet paper. Once you think you've removed all the masking fluid, you can rub your finger over the paper to make sure you don't feel any remaining masking fluid. I'm also taking off the mask in that shallow water to reveal the white ripples. I really like how this part turned out with the crashing wave up behind the rock and that splash going up into the sky area. With the masking fluid off, we can paint some shadows into the white to make it look more realistic. I'm mixing up French ultramarine with a little bit of quinacridone rose to create a purple color. It's very diluted. I'm painting that along the bottom edge of the crashing wave and then rinsing my brush out and blotting it off so it's just damp and using it to soften and blend out the color. I don't want to cover all of the white, but I want to give the wave a shadow. And it's okay if you end up with some hard edges in the wave. I'm also using a tissue to blot as well. Again, I'm using very small amounts of pigment. It's better to build it up slowly than to add too much. I'm leaving white at the top of the wave and then making it darker towards the bottom. Now I'm adding straight French ultramarine along that bottom edge to create the deepest part of the shadow. I'm frequently rinsing my brush and blotting it dry so I can use it to blend out the pigment. I'm adding a darker section of French ultramarine here, dabbing it in randomly, and then using a clean damp brush to soften those spots. I'm applying the same purple color for the wave crashing up behind the rock, except I'm keeping it lighter there. Now I'm using a clean, damp brush to soften the edge where the sea spray is above the wave. I'm wetting the blue paint and then using my tissue to lift some of that color so there isn't such a hard edge. Finally, I want to give my rocks one more pass. Once they dried, I wasn't happy with how gray they looked. I missed some of the warmth from the original burnt sienna wash. So I've mixed up some more burnt sienna with just a touch of French ultramarine, and I'm gonna glaze that over the rocks. I have also mixed up a darker mix to drop in along the bottom of the rocks.
Now our crashing wave painting is finished. Using the masking fluid on wet paper helped us achieve realistic splashes. If you want to learn more about masking fluid, you can download my free guide, Masking Magic, at the link in the description. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and have fun painting waves.